Hey friend, it is Kate here. Thank you so much for jumping on my channel and joining me for a class today. Now I've got a lovely relaxing class for us. A nice myofascial release class using one of our handy dandy little balls. Now I like the little rad balls personally. Um, there'll be a link in the description below. It is an affiliate if you feel like supporting me in that way, that's always nice. Um, but you can also use a tennis ball or a lacrosse ball. A lacrosse ball might be a little bit um, uh, intense, just know that you might need to back it up now and then. This is a little bit more spongy than a lacrosse ball is. Um, either way though, we're going to hit the whole low body. This is a really nice relaxing class if you've been on your feet all day. Um, so yeah, go ahead, grab your ball, roll out your mat, and let's get started. Okay, so grab your little ball. Um, again, I use the Rad brand ones, but honestly, if you've got like a tennis ball, lacrosse ball might be a little extra dense, but you can absolutely try that and you can always modify. Sometimes if you have the lacrosse ball and it's just too much, if you put it in a sock and it doesn't roll quite as well, but it can add a little bit of extra um, softness to there. So just food for thought. But we are gonna start lying down and hang on to your little ball. Now, I will admit to you, I'm probably gonna have to futz with my mic a few times throughout this class, um, simply because of what's happening, so I apologize about that. But let's just begin laying on our mat, and close your eyes for a second, and focus on how your low body's feeling right now. There's no right or wrong. Do you have tension somewhere? Is there maybe a little bit of pulling in one area? maybe even some pain. Hopefully, maybe taking this time to be a little kinder, a little nicer to your body will just add a little extra love, a little extra care, and help relieve some of those feelings. Now, let's just begin with eyes open or closed, simply rocking your hips side to side, kind of windshield wipering the knees. Just kind of getting into your low back, your hips, just waking up the spine a little bit. And then eventually from here, I want you to pause and elongate your right leg. And just notice what that does to your body. Do you immediately really arch the back? I'm not super concerned today with keeping an imprinted spine if you've done a lot of classes with me. Instead, we're really just focusing on that lower body. But we're gonna take our ball and bring it to the front of our hip, our psoas area, um, just in and around begin to kind of roll it. And we don't have to put a lot of pressure in, we're just kind of waking up those nerve endings. And you can either really focus on one spot, maybe rolling it around, kind of in the place where your pocket might be. I kind of like to push it in towards my pubic bone and then back up to the outside edge of my hip. So right along that spot where your you know, thigh and your hip meet, kind of pushing it again in towards my pubic bone and then back towards the outside edge. And then usually I like to find a spot and pause, usually around the center of where that pocket might be and pull my knee into my chest. Now sometimes I really press down and kind of pull that knee up higher so I can get deeper into that feeling there and then rock it in and out a little bit. And when we do this kind of work, you might find um, kind of little knots or little tense points. And um, I'm not a physician, I'm not a physical therapist, but I've been told by all of those that I do work with that if we have those either tingling feelings or kind of snapping feelings, as long as they kind of stop or go away when you stop doing the action, it's okay. Now we're gonna set our foot down and take the ball and bring it just barely underneath our hip. So it's almost towards the side. And it's right along the very top part of your hip there. And I'm very lightly going to rock my weight towards the ball and then rock it away. Just lightly leaning into the ball, leaning it away. And my hips do very barely lift off of the ground or the pressure does, they might not actually look like they're lifting up. Um, but then after I've kind of begun to wake up those nerves right there, I'll start to lift the hip up all the way. And I wanna slide the ball almost to the middle of my sacrum, that big bony plate at the base of the spine, and then out towards the edge of the hip again. I'm gonna slide it in, just rolling it over, and then 
pulling it right back out. Now you can put as much pressure into the ball as you want to. You can put more into your feet, lifting the hips up. If you want to relieve some of that, it's totally okay if it's just too much to put all of your body weight down into the ball. Now usually as I start to go back and forth across, I like a little bit of a deeper pressure. So I really like giving into the ball and kind of letting my, my hips sink. And if I did not say this in the intro, I can't remember, but you are welcome to make all the faces you want to while we do this and you can groan and moan. And guess what? No one can see you making ridiculous and weird faces. I will probably make a few ridiculous and weird faces um, and you get to see that. So don't you worry. Now, eventually I'm going to pull it over towards the outside edge of my hip and I want to elongate my leg once more. Now, sometimes it just feels nice to hang out right here, but again, I'm going to rock into the ball and then away from the ball into the ball and then away from the ball just taking it at your own pace as fast as slow as much or as little pressure as you want to on that ball now sometimes I like to rock over and pause and really just let the side of my hip my glute kind of sink into that ball and then eventually let it go back now once more we're gonna bend both knees and I wanna lift my butt up a little bit higher and bring it to the kind of middle of that right cheek and then I'm gonna start that same process. So it's just a little slide side to side in towards almost my tailbone and then out towards the middle of the cheek, back and forth, like a little hula dance, side to side, which is usually what I tell you to avoid doing in my Pilates classes, but not today. Now, no hurry, no rush, but eventually you can elongate that leg like we already did and we can do that rock out, rock in, rock out, rock in and the nice thing about the balls are you can really be as exploratory and creative as you want to you don't have to stay doing the exact same thing I'm doing the entire time or you know maybe you come back to this video and you want to stay somewhere longer or explore something different that's always okay but eventually I'm gonna pause and roll all the way over to my side so it's kind of probably hard to see from here but it's really underneath like the middle of my hip area and usually I can just hold it here and I do tend to make some faces when I do this because this feels pretty sensational for my body um, and sometimes either again that rock of the hip back and forth can feel nice or even a lift and lower of my bottom foot up gets a little bit deeper Ooh, into a couple of different areas yes just like that and then no hurry, no rush, eventually roll onto your back once more and then push it a little bit lower. And if you wanna just explore anywhere else, kind of rolling, moving and grooving on the mat, on that ball, you go for it. But we're about eventually going to come to our second side. So start by taking that ball, bring it to the front of the hip and elongating your left leg or the opposite leg. And we'll just start with those nice easy rolls along the front of our opposite hip. Now again here, I like to push it in towards my pubic bone and then back to the edge. So it's kind of like I'm going into my pocket and out of my pocket, into my imaginary pocket and back out. And both sides can feel very different. So if one side does not feel um, as you know, accepting of this kind of movement and you need to back it up, that's absolutely fine. Or if you need to go deeper, that's okay too. Like we did on the other side, if you wanna bring it to the front middle and then pull that knee up and kind of dig a little bit deeper into that psoas area, you go right ahead. Maybe that doesn't feel good to have the knee up here. Maybe you wanna even pull it higher up into the chest. You absolutely can do what works for you. And then as we feel ready, we're gonna lightly lift the hip up. And remember at first we're starting pretty high, almost to the very top of your sacrum, that big bony plate at the base of your spine, um, and like almost the outside edge of the hip there. And I usually start with it just barely, you know, touching, and then I pull it in towards the middle of my back, and then I push it back out to the edge of the hip. So it's hard to see, but it's basically just going from here and then in back out and in um, as I lie on my mat. And hopefully my mic's not in the way. <laughs> so back and forth. And it's up again, pretty high at first. And then 
we might pull it towards the edge and even kind of elongate our left leg and lean into the ball and then away from the ball. Into the ball and away from the ball. And you can always kind of, you know, play with exactly where the ball is. Maybe on the first side, it really hit the sweet spot and it felt amazing. But on this side, you're like, oh, something doesn't quite feel as right. Don't just stay there. You can explore. It's okay. Back and forth. And then eventually when we're ready, we'll bend our knee. We'll move it to a little bit lower on our glute into the middle of that cheek. And then you pull it in towards your tailbone and then out in and out, taking it as fast, as slow as you want to. No hurry, no rush. And then again, we can elongate our leg and roll over and back, over and back. And then we can roll all the way over to that side if we want to, kind of smashing it underneath our little side booty there. And perhaps we kind of move side to side, maybe you lift and lower that bottom leg. That might feel extra intense on one side. And then eventually roll onto your back. Go ahead and push it just a little bit lower and explore anywhere else on the body, on your booty anyway, that you wanna kind of move and groove. Now you can definitely stay here longer than we just did and maybe you wanna back it up and go to a spot that felt really good and hang out there a little longer, that's great. But eventually we are going to sit ourselves up and come to our thighs a little bit. Now feel free to sit however you want to. You could even do this sitting on your couch or on your chair, um, but I'm just gonna take the ball and bring it to the inside edge of my knee. And not a lot of pressure since this is a delicate area, but I'm just gonna roll around the inside edge of my knee. Now this is a place that can give me personally a lot of kind of um, tension. And so I like to give it plenty of attention and plenty of love and care and just kind of move the ball over and around the knee. Now I kind of make like a rainbow shape after I've rolled around that inside edge. I just go around and over my little kneecap. And you might even find that pulling it to that outside edge feels extra special and you wanna stay there a little longer and maybe roll it up and then push it in and out that outside edge. And you can go back to your little rainbow action above your kneecap if you're in the mood. Maybe hang out in that inner part of the knee if that feels better, it's okay. And then we're just gonna take it to the other side when we're ready. And again, I like to start on the inner edge of my knee and not a whole, whole lot of pressure, just kind of waking up that area, giving a little roll, a little love. And then I start my rainbow action back and forth. And again, you could sit like this up a little taller and straighter, straighter if you wanted to, or if it feels good just to have the leg extended in front of you, that's totally fine too. And then maybe you roll and kind of wiggle it on the outside edge. And we can go back to that rainbow action. And you might, you can use both hands, taking it as deep or shallow as you want to. Again, for me, I get a lot of I get a lot out of rolling on the inside edge of my knee. That helps to remove a lot of tension and pain for me in that area. Years of ballet, my knees and hips can be a little bit sad sometimes. So doing this kind of work, oh my gosh, I see a marked difference in how my body feels um, if I've not been regularly doing some kind of myofascial release. Um, so for me, this is good stuff. Also, it's really easy to do while you're just like relaxing at the end of your night. You can hang out in front of the TV. Give yourself a little roll. All right, and we're gonna come down a little bit lower on our calf muscles. Now, calves can get um, pretty tense for a lot of us. I usually start in the inside edge and I just roll it from kind of the spot underneath my knee down to about the middle of my calf, back in and out. And oh, my calves are real sore today, so I might make some really crazy faces here and that's okay. If you've got any runners out there, this would be some good stuff for you. And then I do the same thing with the other outside. And then rolling through the back edge of the calf. 
Now, for anyone that has a lot of pain, a lot of tension, maybe some Charlie horses here, this can either feel really good or maybe too intense and that's okay. But I will take the ball now and kind of sandwich it in my knee pit and come to a, almost a child's pose ask, kind of a, a hero's pose. Um, but you can play with exactly where you take the ball, but I usually kind of start with it pretty high up into my knee pit and I just lightly sink down and kind of squish it between my hamstring and my calf muscle. And I go back and forth until I find a sweet spot and by sweet spot, I mean a very sensational spot and I usually rock my hips side to side a little bit. And then I bring it a little lower down my calf, rock it side to side a little bit, making all the faces you need to, taking it as low as you want to down towards the ankle, or maybe realizing it feels better a little higher. That's okay. And it can feel different day to day. This kind of work, um, this is a video that you could repeat over and over again, and you might get something new out of it each time because our body changes so much. So this is not something that you just need to do once. Um, but if any of these things feel really good, you know, you can slowly incorporate them into your daily self care. Now let's go ahead and move it over to the other calf muscle if we haven't already. And again, I usually start kind of up near the crook of my knee and I just push it down to the middle of my calf and then back up, down to my calf and back up, taking it as um, fast or slow as I want to with as much or as little pressure. And then maybe to that outside edge. and the back of the calf if you want. And then if we want to do that little sandwichy move, bringing it underneath our little knee pit area and then lightly leaning down. And again, you can kind of have it either towards like the outside edge or right in the middle of the calf, but leaning back and kind of squishing it there. Ooh, it's extra sensational for me today. My left calf is definitely feeling it a little bit more than my right. Swing those hips lightly side to side. Of course, if you've got, you know, really sad knees and you don't want to be in a kneeling position like this, you absolutely can just use your own body weight to kind of roll it around in a seated pose. You might not get quite as deep of that kind of massage as we're getting because it's all of my body weight I'm using to kind of squish that ball down into my calf. And again, just play with where it feels good, where you want to keep it. Now, the last place we're going to use it is on our feet. Got to pay attention to our feet, of course. So take the ball, bring it underneath your toes. And then all I want you to do is kind of grip your toes and then roll it towards your heel and then push it back underneath, kind of clawing your toes around it. So I push it back and forth. And the foot stuff is great to do at the end of the day, especially if you're someone that has a job that's on their feet all day. If I've got any teachers, any nurses out there that are running, 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 or, you know, servers, um, this is really good stuff to do at the end of your day. In fact, I keep a little wooden foot roller underneath my coffee table here at home. So I have built in foot care time um, or keeping a ball, um, you know, in a great big like bowl on your coffee table near your TV. I'm all about making it easy on yourself. Now, eventually I do like to bring it to my heel and this can take a little bit of balance. So if you fall over, don't worry, I do that all the time. Or you can just put your hand on a wall, be a little smarter, but I want you to roll it around your heel. Just taking it as fast or slow as you want to. And then other direction. And we do not have to be graceful in this class. I don't think I said that at the beginning of the class, but I hope you know that this is not about being graceful. This is about being nice and kind to your body. And then just really guide it wherever it feels best. If you want to, you can pull it towards the top of your foot, kind of underneath your metatarsals and go back and forth along that foot. Sometimes we find some kind of creaky spots or little snappy places. But when you're ready, we'll take it to the other foot. And again, no need to be graceful at all. But kind of wrap those little toes around, put a little bit of pressure and then push it towards your heel and then pull it back, wrapping the toes around. 
push it out and away <laughs> and wrap it back. And it's harder to do than it looks with nothing to hold on to. So again, if you've got a chair, a wall, something nearby, <laughs> that's okay. You do you. And then like we did on the first side, if you want to bring it to the heel, maybe bend your knee a little bit, maybe put a little bit more pressure in there and then circle it around the heel. And know if you're not doing this with any kind of like chair next to you, you're doing some nice balancing work too, stabilizing through your opposite ankle, keeping your tummy muscles turned on. We can always think about all those good things too. So it can be kind of an extra bang for your buck sort of moment. And then just guide it wherever feels good. Maybe pulling it underneath those toes again, wrapping it around, swaying it side to side, doing whatever you want to. And then just let it go. And as always, give yourself a pat on the back. Thank yourself for doing something so good and just for you. I hope you enjoyed our little low body myofascial release uh, class with a nice little tennis ball or rad ball, whatever you've got out there. I certainly hope to see you soon. And um, yeah, have a great rest of your day.